Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome back. I have a biography, a nonfiction, um, illustrated, not as well as I'd like, but um, a great story that I wouldn't get a chance to read to you in the classroom because it's really long, so get cozy. It's called Sky Boys, and I know lots of our friends like to build, and this is a story about a real place that looks like this. Um, I was able to go with the band a few years ago with Curtis and Kristen and see the Empire State Building, which is huge. Um, this is a story about how they built the Empire State Building. It was written by Deborah Hopkinson and James Ransom. Here are the real pictures of all of the construction that happened at that time. It's the end of winter and your pops lost his job. So every morning before school, you scour your streets for firewood, hunched down in city wood. Back in the day when the Empire State was built, uh, Empire State Building was built, um, many homes had fireplaces instead of the gas or electric furnace that we have usually here in Flat Rock now. Oh, but look, here's a pile of wood free for the taking, all carted off from that old hotel they tore down at 34th and 5th. 600 men are working there, leveling, shoveling, hauling, clearing the rubble away. They're getting ready to make something. Bold, soaring, a symbol of hope in the darkest of times. A building, clean and simple, and straight as a pencil, and tall, so tall it will scrape the sky. You drag your pop along and see. Tell him what you've heard on the street. Mr. Rushgub wants to build the tallest skyscraper in the world, you say. Taller even than Mr. Chrysler's building. They say it'll be done by next May. Think they can build it that fast, Pop? Thinks are so bad it seems foolish to even try, he replies, and then he sees your face and adds, of course, you never know, so let the race begin. First come rumbling flatbed trucks, bundles of steel on their backs, like a gleaming endless river surging through the concrete canyons of Manhattan. The steel is strong and new, only 80 hours old, barely cooled from the fiery furnaces of Pittsburgh. That is in Pennsylvania, but they used a lot of waterways to bring it in um, so that they would have the strength that they needed. Now before your eyes, a steel forest appears, 210 massive columns lifted by derricks and set onto concrete pillars, fire pyres, sunk 50 foot down hard to rock bottom. So it would be like the basement of a basement, really, really low to give it support so it could be really, really tall. Columns so firm and strong, they can bear the full weight of this giant to be 365,000 tons. Then it's the Sky Boys show. Derek men hoisting, swinging, easily each beam into place easing each beam into place. High overhead they crawl like spiders on steel, spinning their giant web in the sky. Watch out, sky boys, don't slip in the rain or let the wind whisk you away. That's a very dangerous job, especially in conditions that can pop up like the wind or the rain. Wouldn't you love to be one of them? The breeze in your face and your muscles as strong as the girder you ride. Or you could be a water boy climbing high with your bucket to bring the Sky Boys a drink. They'll laugh and call out, keep your eyes on the beam, water boy, and don't look down. That would be really, really scary for me. As each beam is placed, the riveting gang is there to fasten the frame together. Four men work as one. First man, the heater, gets the rivet red hot in the forge and tosses it up quick. A throw of 50 foot is nothing to him. Now the second man, the catcher, snares the rivet in his funneled tin can. He fishes it out with tongs and he sticks it in the hole. The third man is the bucker up. He keeps the rivet nice and steady with his bar. And the fourth man, the gunman, hammers it into the steel good and hard. Toss, catch, steady, pound. Toss, catch, steady, pound. One or two rivets a minute, 500 rivets a day. Now, at the same time, other workers use six hoists to carry 8,000 pound loads of wood and steel right to where they're needed. And on each floor, hand poured rail cars on tracks, move limestone pipes and wires around to make the work easier. 
There are temporary elevators, water tanks, and yes, toilets. Five lunch stands and even a restaurant. No need to leave the job. Get hot beef stew and coffee here on the unfinished 47th floor. Now in this new ingenious assembly line construction, each man works as fast as he can knowing that down below a hundred jobless men are ready to take over his spot in a flash. Yet knowing too that the quicker he finishes, the sooner he'll be back in line himself, waiting and desperate for work. Boys and girls, not only in New York, but in Michigan too, this was a time where many people lost their jobs. From the spot on the sidewalk, you watch the building take shape bit by bit piece by piece, like a giant real life puzzle, rising four and a half stories each week. In November, the Sky Boys give a cheer. The skeleton has a skin and all 102 stories are done. And by March, the mast on the top makes this the tallest building in the world. At 5.42 p.m. March 18th, 1931. Now, like a general launching an attack, the builder sends more men, bricklayers, masons, carpenters, electricians, plumbers, all hammering, nailing, wiring, and cutting, morning till night, week after week, and month after month. May 1st, 1931. Opening day, finished in record time, 60,000 tons of steel, 10 million bricks, 2,000 tons of marble, 6,500 windows, 70 miles of water pipes, 1,860 stairs, one year and 45 days, 7 million man hours, more than 3,000 men, a triumph of speed, safety, and efficiency, and something else too, beauty. These um, are pictures and paintings that the artist has drawn really wonderfully that I give you a challenge to check into the Empire State Building and see lots of videos or pictures of it. It's impressive. Now, the ribbon is cut and the crowds swarm in. Amazing, spectacular. Now the world can see what New York City is all about. Outside, Pop has a big surprise. Let's go on up, he suggests with a grin. I'll be putting our pennies aside. So the crowd sweeps you into a marbled lobby, a tall grand lady clothed head to toe in rich glowing colors on the center wall, a silhouette. That's a word from our last story too. The silhouette glitters like a jewel. The Empire State Building, it's a pride of New York City. To go up to the top, it's a buck for adults, two bits for kids. Hop on board for the longest elevator ride of your life. Just swallow if your ears start to hurt. Now, in no time you're there, but even on tiptoe, you can't see a thing. And then whoosh, you're on Pop's back. Gee whiz, you shout, we're on top of the world. Pop shakes his head, disbelieving. If we can do this, we can do anything, he says. And itching to see it all, you jump down and you race around the deck. North to south and east to west, all Manhattan lies at your feet. Say, Pop, you call, do you think there's a kid just like me way down there looking up at us right here? Well, after a while, the sun slips away, tiny lights and stars flicker on, and bright threads of taxis lace the darkness below. The great city shimmers and hums, and all around, folks are starting to leave, and you beg, please, Pop, just a few minutes more. But it's time, so with one last look, you head down to Earth. And on the long way home, you're fuzzy with sleep, holding tight to your father's rough hand. But then the corner you turn, and stop short and surprised. Look, Pop, we can see it from here. Oh, how the light lights up the night. And there's a note about the story and acknowledgement about all the sources because the author really had to look into this. Uh, with construction being completed in 1931. Um, my mom and dad were only born in 1933, 1934. Uh, not too many of us still have family and friends around to tell stories about that. Um, so it's an impressive place as is Rockefeller Center and uh, the Statue of Liberty and lots of places in New York City, which by bus was nine, 10, 11, a lot of hours. Um, 
So it's kind of a hike away, but um, if you're checking this out in Flipgrid, what is going to follow is talk about the Mighty Mac and all of the impressive things that we have near us when it's safe to travel. So stay well, and we'll see you next time.